and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at another technique, technique which can be used to identify molecules. Today we're looking at mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry uses electrons to split molecules into charged fragments. This happens in the ionisation part here. These fragments are then accelerated and travel through a magnetic field to separate them. That's in this part here. They are separated by their mass charge ratio. Low mass charge ratio fragments are deflected the most and those that have larger mass charge ratio are deflected the least. They are then detected at the detection point here and a spectra is produced. When a molecule is fragmented, some specific peaks will be seen within the mass spectra. The first specific peak that we look out for is the molecular ion. This is the full molecule that has been ionised and always has the highest mass charge ratio in the spectra that you'll be looking at. This is really useful as this can be taken as the gram formula mass. If you've used elemental analysis to calculate empirical formula, you can then work out what your actual formula is using the formula mass of your empirical formula in conjunction with your molecular ion. If they're the same, then your empirical formula will be the final formula or it may be that your molecular ion is a multiple of your empirical formula. The second peak that we look out for is the base peak. This is a peak with 100% abundance in the spectra and is often quite a stable peak. Let's have a look at fragmentation. Here we have a molecule of ethanol. We're going to have a look at what fragments could be formed from this molecule. So when the molecule is bombarded with electrons, it can cause charges to form. This can also then cause the bonds to start to break and then you will get fragments forming. So our likely molecular ion will be the whole molecule with a positive charge. This means that this will have a mass charge ratio of 46. So our mass charge ratio is the mass of the, of the fragment, so 46, divided by the charge, which here is 1, so we're having a mass charge ratio of 46. We're only going to focus on things which have a 1 positive charge, so the mass charge ratio is just going to be like the mass for this part. We then need to look at where bonds could break within here. So we could break a bond here and we could have a fragment of CH3 or we could have this as a fragment. So if our fragment was CH3 that was being detected, this would have to be CH3 plus to be detected. However, we could also have CH2OH as a fragment. Or perhaps we could break our bond here instead and end up with a C2H5 fragment or even an OH fragment. Each of these fragments will have a characteristic mass which you would then see within the spectrum. Here is the spectrum of ethanol. So you can see that at 46 we have our molecular ion which was the whole of our ethanol. And then just one below at 45 we have another fragment here which would logically be without the H attached to the um, oxygen. We then have our base peak here at 31. One of the ways that we can work out what this fragment is and what has been lost is by looking at the molecular ion and working out what is the difference between the molecular ion and the peak that we're now looking at. So from 46 to 31, we have lost 15. So you then need to look at the structure of your molecule and work out which part would weigh 15. So for this molecule, we've lost the CH3 group and the fragment that we're seeing is the CH2OH with a positive charge. You could then go on and have a look at the other parts of the molecule and work out what has been lost. Here's a spectra for propanoic acid. I want you to pause the video now and try and work out what each of the main peaks that you can see within this spectra are. This example we've got specific peaks which would be sensible to look at so we'll have a look at this peak here 
this peak here, this peak here, and around about here as well. So starting off looking at this one here, there is a tiny peak here at 75 that we are just going to ignore just now. That is a quirk of the way that mass spectrometry works and the different isotopes that are present. So this one here is actually our molecular ion. So this is going to be your CH3, CH2, COOH for propanoic acid with a positive charge. So going between here, which is 74, and this one here, which is 57, so this one here is 57, we have lost 17 in the process there. So 17 is going to be 16 for oxygen and 1 for hydrogen. So this means that for peak 17, we're going to have CH3, CH2, CO positive. So you need to think about the structure and logically what parts could be fragmented off of the molecule. If we now have a look between peak 74 and peak 45. So here we've got minus 29. So to lose 29, we could lose this 15 here plus another 14 and be left with COOH positive. And this here would add up to 45. And then the final one that we're going to look at is this one here. So at 29, so this is the opposite there. So this is minus 45. So where we fragmented off this group and we're left behind with the CH3 and the CH2 group. So just like infrared and any other spectroscopy, you would not use this on its own to work out the structure of a molecule. You would use this to work out what the molecular ion is and what some potential fragments were and you would use the clues that you get from other spectroscopies to work out what the full structure of a molecule is. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now!